We make way for the star of Around the Horn, Tim Kalashaw, Dallas Morning News columnist, as we uh, delve a little deeper into Mark Cuban and uh, a couple of stories here. Which one do you want to start with, uh, Tim? Oh, take your pick. They're both so glorious. Uh, uh, you want to start, let's start with the smaller one, the $600,000 okay. fine? I think that's the, the minor story at this point. Right, is he too honest here? He got fined for being too honest? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Rick Carlisle has been asked a lot by me and others about what's going on, and he tries to talk about some of the young lineups they play in the fourth quarter, uh, sort of a euphemism for their best players are sometimes on the bench. And Cuban just said what they're doing. But, I mean, you still shouldn't say it. Uh, it's just you can't, you can't go out and tell people who are season ticket holders or trying to watch on TV that we're trying to lose games and that – you know, that just doesn't fly. So I, I'm not surprised he got fined, but he, he, he was being honest. But he said even worse a year ago on our show when he said, we're doing everything we can to lose games. I mean, he, no, he, yeah, but what he said on your show is once we were eliminated. So you can kind of tolerate that. It's interesting because at, at the start of last season, when they were 3-13, and 13, he scoffed at all of it and laughed at the media who talked about tanking and said, you never do that. You never want to teach young players bad habits. That's how you get to be four years away from four years away. Then he went on your show and, 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 you know, made big news by saying, once we were eliminated, we did everything we can to lose games. You can kind of justify that, but I mean, no one's eliminated in the middle of the season and and they've been doing this for a long time. So he's just being, Look, everybody knows Philadelphia did it, but the owner and Sam Hinkie didn't come out and say it. Cuban came out and said it, so he got fined. Did you see that the Chicago Bulls on the same day yesterday that Cuban gets popped for six hundred grand? The Bulls say they're going to go with their younger players the final twenty five games. So they're basically <laughs> they're, they're doing what there's Dallas is teams. doing, right? Yeah, there's eight teams doing it. Atlanta, I mean Atlanta, uh, Chicago traded Miritich. Because he was playing too well. It's like, <laughs> oh, we're winning some games here. No, I'm serious. Yeah. And uh, Atlanta, Sacramento. I mean, Sacramento has no business playing as poorly as they do. So they, they owned the Rising Stars Challenge, but uh, they're, they're still going to lose as many games as they can. It's Now, they think they've changed this with the lottery next year, but, you know, everybody's chances go, uh, the, go down to 14%, but we'll see. What's the local reaction to the Sports Illustrated report about the sexual harassment charges that have been going on for over 20 years? It's, it's uh, you know, kind of amazement that it's been going on this long. And when I first read it Tuesday night, or started reading it too late Tuesday night when it came on or saw it, I thought, Tadeem Usri and Buddy Pim- I, I know I've written something about this. What did I write? And I being the internet savvy person I am, I called somebody at work to tell him to send it to me because <laughs> I couldn't look it up myself. And it was 20 years ago. It was in August of 1998. Ross Perot still on the team and the, the Mavericks investigated Terdima Asri for six weeks and they wouldn't say what the investigation is for. Same thing. Sexual uh, misconduct or harassment in the workplace. And they hired this guy, Buddy Pittman, to run their HR. And that's all they ever said about it. And that's all... And, and Mark Stein was at our paper. He wrote the story. I wrote a column about it. And uh, that was really all that was ever said about it. And Terdima was a guy who was here for, I think, 14 years under Cuban. And you never, he wasn't a very, I mean, everybody said hello to him, but he wasn't the guy you quoted. So nobody really knew what was going on. It, it never came up again. So you kind of figured it, it went away. The idea that the, all these stories, these women told John Wertheim and, and Jessica Luther that going on in 2004 and 2007 and all these things. It's just incredible to think that Mark Cuban, who, run, who micromanages everything, didn't know any of this, never heard about it. You know, his HR director didn't tell him. So he had no way of knowing. I mean, that's people find that part of it just preposterous. And that's going to be his hardest thing to sell is that a guy who has always bragged about being an owner who is hands-on and knows everything and talks to people and he's transparent and all the rest. He was clueless as to what was going on in his own business office. Is there a chance with the severity of these charges that Cuban could lose his team? 
I would say at this very early stage, no, just because Donald Sterling's stuff was different and that was directly him. And this is going to be more at the worst. I think you're going to reach the conclusion Cuban probably knew, but uh, didn't do anything about it, which is bad. So I'm, and, and these stories, I mean, we've seen what's happened, <clears throat> you know, all over Hollywood and sports and politics and everywhere else. So I can't say it won't. Um, but I think this is different. If it's if it's if it's not directly tied to him, it's more his responsibility than something he did. But I obviously, Dan, I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, these things get legs and they grow, and and you can't stop them. Here's the here's one of those puzzling parts of this that you have the Mavs dot com reporter Earl Sneed, who was still employed after two separate domestic violence incidents, and then he's he can't go into Canada to follow a company, the team. I get. Mark has to know that, and, and you still employ this guy. That, that's, that's a rough part of the story, too. The, you, could, uh, you could argue the second chance idea that we give a lot of people, and that's fine. But Mark knew about the second time he had an incident, and that was with the Mavericks employee yeah, yeah. that he was dating. So then he draws up, or he has his HR guy drop a contract. You cannot have one-on-one conversations or contact with females in the Mavericks organization. Well, their PR person is Sarah Melton. You know, did Earl was Earl never able to talk to Sarah the last four years? I mean, that's just a silly thing. And Cubans, you know, the only thing Cuban has spoken about to Tim McMahon was, was the Earl Sneed stuff. And he was very apologetic about it, but he also comes across sounding ridiculous when he says, we were worried that if we fired him, He'd just get hired somewhere else and oh, go do it boy. there. Oh, boy. I mean, that's that's a terrible way of thinking. Tim Callishaw around the horn, Dallas Morning News columnist. Uh, I'm trying to figure out this Kawhi Leonard situation. I know you're in Dallas, but with, with the Spurs, and it feels like, you know, they get the right players with the right personalities that fit that team. What What has happened? What's gone wrong here? I don't know. I mean, that whole thing that has gone with, you know, there's obviously he has been at odds for a while with the team's medical people. And, you know, the Spurs had this very, very, I mean, they deserved it, but they had this very fortunate run when your best players over two decades are David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Ginobili Parker. I mean, guys who love that team and do everything they can for it. You're occasionally going to, you know, enter the real world and have some problems. And now they have an issue. And I don't, you know, nobody really seems to know if, if Kawhi thought he was rushed back too soon or if they thought he was taking too long, you know, just what it is, but it's like they've given up now. Wow. We don't expect to see him the rest of the year. I know. Well, they can't tank. Their record's too good. They're, they can't go anywhere. I mean, there's no, there's nothing for them to gain from this uh, by sitting him. So uh, it's, it's kind of Popovich's first time he's ever had a problem like this. Any cowboy drama we need to be aware of? Dan, we've got the draft coming to town April 26th. I hope you'll be riding into town uh, with your show. We'd love to have you. Um, Wait, no, are you we, are uh, you hosting the draft, Tim? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll have a little thing over here in my townhouse. You can, you can do the show right here. You can do it right here in Uptown. Beautiful Uptown. I, mean, I think you're familiar with McKinney Avenue. Yeah, I've I been there. Be- you are. Yeah, I've been there before. I have a hunch you are. I think I've been there with you in previous life. That was the old um, Tim Callishaw. Yeah, the fun one. Yeah. Not this, not this guy that geez, just beats people to death with his, uh, you know, Diet Cokes. Uh, yeah, no, they, I mean, the Cowboys have had a, they're going to have, have to have a very interesting off season. They got a lot of things to fix. They're still a good team, but they need receivers. They need defense. They didn't do anything with the coaches up high. They hired a bunch of different assistants, but Jerry is going to want to make some noise when the draft is here. I don't know what that will be, but, uh, well, you, what do you make of M- Michael Irvin yelling at me at the, at the Super Bowl about, you know, Des- I, don't know, I don't know about that. What did he yell at you for? I, I, I said, should they move on from Des Bryant? And then he... Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So they verbally spanked me on, you know, why would yeah. I... Is Des Bryant going to be that, I, with that team? It's a good question, Dan. I wrote that I didn't think he would, and I, I, I still lean that way. And because uh, they, they did this with DeMarcus Ware... 
not not saying that worked really well. DeMarcus Ware won a Super Bowl Oops. in Denver, but yeah. I don't know that he would have you know done anything with here with this team. Uh, I think that that might be where they have. They're already. I think they're 19 million under the cap, which sounds like a lot, but they got to sign Zach Martin. They got to franchise Demarcus Lawrence. They got to do a lot of stuff if they want to really redo things and uh, really try to change some things around here. I think they might have to move on from it. So I still think it's a chance. Forty percent chance. Forty two percent. Forty two percent chance. Yes. All right. Are you in around the horn tonight? Uh, I am. Thank you for asking. Uh, tough loss yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, I think, don't get uh, over those losses on around the horn. Like when you lose, I lose. Well, here's the, uh, we all do, Dan. And the hard thing is, you know, going day to day, back to back days, coming back from a loss. I haven't really had time to to digest that one. And now I've got to go against uh, Woody and Ramona Shelburne, Ramona Shelburne and Clinton Yates. I mean, this is this is a whole new crew from the team that the group that brought me down yesterday. Why don't you tank? <laughs> you think that's never happened? <laughs> Has anybody? Wow! Hold on here! Wow! Oh, no. Wait a minute! What have I done? This just in. What have I done? So you've had writers who wanted to get out of the show early, perhaps, and they tanked on around the horn. Is that what you're saying, I'm Tim Kalashaw? I'm just saying there. I might have called myself out a few times for past mistakes, and that results in a deduction. When I needed to go to lunch or somewhere, but you know, <laughs> I, you know, Fritzy, that's just Fritzy, how I get, right now, get but, Tony Reale on the show. This is huge news. Get right. this is big news right God, now. Wow, I did not mean to do this. Wow, I hope this is brought up by Reale <laughs> later today. Don't you guys have a conference call or something? Oh, they they seem to know every time I'm on your, your show. <laughs> they seem to they seem to find a way to bring that up. <laughs> All right, we'll be rooting for you, Tim, as only we can. Please. All right. Please Thank do. you, Tim. Thank you. That's Thanks, Tim Kalashow, ESPN Around the Horn, Dallas Morning News columnist. I know he joked about, you know, being the uh, the, the former Tim Kalashow. Tim had a good time, but, uh, you know, Tim sought help and uh, is a different person. And, uh, you know, he's doing, doing well. Good dude. <laughs> Tanking on Around the Horn. Who would have thought? We broke that. Yes, we did. Yeah. Somebody's going to confirm it. John Clayton might confirm that, but we broke that story.